What's that earthy? Get back to the main monastery story. You know the helicopter view? Don't get uh, wandering too far on those side tracks, huh? Okay, yeah, the main monastery story. Uh, well, uh, you get the overall picture. Uh, the events in my comprehensive life review, you know, uh, are less essential than the process itself. So enough is enough of that. And it's not so mental, huh? Phew, glad to get over and uh, clear with the mental, huh? And besides, my self-projected uh, cinematic review of my life uh, is over. The, f the film just runs out. Film? <laughs> we used to use film. Uh, and all the uh, tangled uh, knots in my life are uh, untied. Yeah. What a relief. What joy. No more suppressed anything. On the mental plane, I'm clear with my spirit right up to the present moment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, admitting my missteps and uh, congratulating myself when I got things way right. Like, you know, following my spirit to go to India. Go to India. Let's see. Um, so, um, well, I rub my eyes, look around myself, huh? Magnificent surrounding Himalayas. Huh? Oh, I flood my lungs with this crisp Himalayan air. Oh, space out on the fog, unlading. Rolling across this uh, old weathered monastery built in 1911. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm 21. Strong. Confident. Bold. Phew. And absolutely clear with myself from the womb to the present moment. Phew. Well, that's when a uh, young uh, runaway from the Dalai Lama's camp in Dharamsala, a guy named Dorje, he split there, uh, was a little too strict for him, kind of wanted to smoke a bunch of hashish and not get like a hard word about it and this, that, and the other thing. So uh, Dorje shows up, and so my situation dramatically changes because I have an interpreter. He speaks basic English. Mm -hmm. And I can receive instruction from his eminence, Tukse Rinpoche. I mean, I've been getting it all telepathically anyway. Why? Because uh, I meditate right above the actual main temple. And they've got long horns. Tibetans, huh? Huge symbols. Uh, kind of like these Shanai's uh, oboes. Tibetan oboes. Shrill. And drums, <laughs> yeah, they got drums with two heads, little leather clappers, bling, bling, bling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how am I supposed to get some sleep? Uh, I'm so fortunate to be sitting in this benign, grounded Tibetan forest field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, at this time, my teacher, Tukse Rinpoche, he's 55 back in 1969, and so now he's, uh, he's not here anymore, that's where he is, I borrowed out, just one of those Tibetan paradise realms, yeah, uh, -huh. uh yeah, he's 55 at this time, and the head of the monastery, a double tuko with a half twist, uh, is, uh, Gualwang, and who, he's six, our leader is six years old, special kid, mm -hmm. never fights, ears look Martian, and he's the 12th reincarnation of somebody. Uh, uh, in other words, his spirit has inhabited 12 different human bodies starting in 1161 A.D., 
Yeah, he never gets up tired. Mm -hmm. The 12th, Wal Wang Drukpa, and he served gourmet food every day. That means he gets rice every day. Whereas our uh, common monks, we get rice once a week and a kind of soup with flour globules floating in it, malnutrition soup. I'm lucky to be alive today to tell you this story. Twelfth oh. Wuling Drukpa, huh? Tibetan hero of the whole story. Yeah, gifted child, Chitre Monastery. Um, now he's like 60 years old and world famous. Mm -hmm. Wal Wang speaks fluent, sophisticated English. Uh, and he's got millions of followers on, uh, you know, his website. I, you know, because I really enjoy vanity. Can't get enough of that. Huh? Uh, was the young Gul Wang watching me when I planted the 50 apple trees around the monastery? It amuses me. <laughs> To think so, because as an adult, Wolwing set the Guinness Book of Records, uh, uh, and he didn't even drink Guinness. He didn't drink anything except yak butter tea to get off. Uh, yeah, why was he in the Guinness Book of Records? Because he planted 100,000 trays without stopping on one occasion. Well, he had 9,800 helpers. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, the United Nations has named Gual Wang the guardian of the Himalayas. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I wonder, you know, are these two detailed uh, cosmological maps that the Tibetans uh, uh, download, downloaded? W was it downloaded through him and I was just like a coolie where they... Were they using me as a porter, as a messenger? Uh, uh, if so, uh, fine. I mean, you know, transport two treasure scrolls? They, they don't weigh much. You know, down to earth. Uh, divine porter. I got flesh on my bones and all I am is a porter for an amazing, awesome cosmos.